Yeah. Call this meeting of the Board of Supervisors of January 7th to order. Roll call, please. Supervisor Bronson? Here. Supervisor <clears throat> Carroll? Here. Supervisor Elias? Presente. Supervisor Miller? Chairman Valadez? Present. Let the record show that Chairman Miller is absent. All other members are present. Chairman Miller? Supervisor Miller is absent. All other yeah, members are present. Um, we, uh, I don't believe our pastor is here. Is our pastor here today? No. So uh, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get. A, uh, we'll stand for a moment of silence, and then the, it will be followed by a pledge of allegiance by uh, Supervisor Bronson. Everyone, please stand for a moment of silence. Supervisor Bronson? Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Carroll. Mr. Chairman, thank you for a point of personal privilege. I'd just like to note the passing of a very fine member of our community who passed away just this weekend. And Mrs. Furrier has uh, been a big part of the South Point Catholic family in this community as she was co-founder with her husband, Jack, of Furrier's Western Tires. It's uh, just a a life well lived and I thought it was important to mention that on Saturday she will be buried out of St. Thomas the Apostle at 10 a.m. Thank you, sir. I hope the prayers are with the family, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all the rest. Thank you, Supervisor Carroll. Supervisor Elias. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd also like to take a moment of personal privilege to uh, speak of my friend Nancy Gallen, who passed away on December 23rd. and. Um, she was a, a, a member of the South Point community also, having taught there and, and St. John's Catholic School. She taught there for more than 20 years as well, um, but really was um, a social justice advocate and uh, a volunteer for the United Farm Workers uh, for many years and contributed to our community in so many different ways and was a proud educator of people, uh, a lover of fairness, and. Uh, someone who was truly fearless in her activities. Uh, I just wanted to mention her this morning because uh, she was an important part of our community that we lost. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Elias. Any more points? Hearing none, we'll move to pause for pause, and we have Officer Bowden with Nathia, a white and brindle pit bull mix. Good morning. Uh, this is Nathia. She's, um, she's a little nervous today. Nathia has been with us since August of this year. She was brought in and surrendered by her owner. Uh, the owner said that she wasn't good with small children, and um, this was based off of the experience she had with an eight-month-old baby. So I'm guessing at this point, if you've got an infant in the house, it may not be a good idea. I don't know how small of children that's specific to, um, because we have people of all different sizes come in through our clinic, and and she doesn't seem to react to any of them. What I have noticed about this dog, and you, as I mentioned, we've had her since August, um, is that she is a little bit shy when she meets people. She's very, very sweet, and our volunteers that walk her on a daily basis and the people that work with her daily, she's very enthusiastic and friendly with. She just takes some getting to, to, getting to know her time, um, and maybe that's what's kind of gotten in the way of her finding a home. So if there is somebody out there willing to take the time with her, she's very, very sweet. Um, she's young, she's healthy, she's, you know, she's ready to go. She's already spayed. Her adoption will include a microchip and her rabies vaccination. So I mean, she's pretty much good to go out the door today. Um, but she does need, like I said, somebody's gonna have to be patient with her and take a little time with her. I would like to point out though that, you know, I mean, we have such a r difficult time being a county shelter. Um, there's just this notorious bad reputation that goes along with it. Um, she's a perfect example of the extent of, of work that people will do for this animal since August. Okay, there was a time when I was a kid, I remember at a county shelter, if your dog didn't get picked up within three or four days, that was it. This dog has been cared for, loved, had her medical needs met, had everything done for her since August. And despite the fact that she does have that 
on her record of being you know, fearful of small children, they still consider her adoptable quality. She's just what we call a rescue now. So as long as you're aware of what the circumstances are, she will, um, she'll be, you know, be fine for adoption. So please keep in mind that they do go the distance for a lot of animals, and this is a perfect example of it. And I brought her today because she is our longest term resident, and I thought we'd start the new year out with, with getting, um, getting the old out and get, getting the new ones in. So please, if you have an Maybe opportunity. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, did you want to adopt her? <laughs> oh, oh gosh. No. <laughs> no, but you'd be a perfect candidate for her. I think you're in the right age group. Um, she is sweet. And if you know anybody that's interested in a, a sweet dog that is maybe not like all the rest, she's not as bouncy um, at first, but she, she gets there when she knows you. So if somebody's interested in that commitment, please send them our way. We'll be open at noon today, so if you want to come down and spend some time with her, by all means. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh God, I'm I'm forgot to look at the fees today. Uh, usually the fee is about fifty dollars for adoptions, and that includes spay neuter and uh, alter, uh, microchipping and shots. If they've been there longer than thirty days, it's traditionally been where the fee is either ten dollars or they waive it totally. Um, I apologize that I, I in all the chaos this morning, I did not check on that because we did just switch rates because it's January now. So sorry, my bad. I'll fix it next week. If, it's, if she's not free, I will pay the bill on this dog. So <laughs> if you can find her a home, I will put the bill on this dog. So please. No, Consider. no, 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 no. Actually, Carrie Sylvain told me that she wanted to oh. uh, <laughs> carry the freight on this dog if anybody here would like to adopt it. And if there's Thank anybody you. else who has a friend or somebody who would like to adopt this dog, telepathic communication, Carrie. Don't worry about it. Well done. Uh, <laughs> Nobody saw it. <laughs> please uh, talk to your friends about maybe adopting this this nice pooch so that she can have a home and uh, have some love and give some love. All those things are tied together. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we move on to item number five, uh, the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday as a day of service uh, proclamation. I move the item. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ben Olson uh, and Vanessa Silverstein, please come up. You were here bright and early this morning. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, thank you so much for this proclamation. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, uh, to present this proclamation to you, and I'd like to, to share it with everybody. Uh, whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to advancing equality, social justice, and opportunity for all, and, and uh, challenged all Americans to participate in never-ending work uh, of building a more perfect union, and whereas Dr. King's teachings can continue to guide and inspire us in addressing challenges in our communities, and whereas, since 1994, millions of Americans have been inspired by the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to serve their neighbors and communities on the King holiday, and whereas, serving on the King holiday is a, an appropriate way to honor Dr. King, meet local and national needs, bring our citizens together, and strengthen our communities and nation, and whereas, the King day of service is the only federal holiday commemorated as a nat uh, natural day of service and offers an opportunity for Americans to give back to their communities on the holiday and make an ongoing uh, commitment to service throughout the year and whereas King Day of Service projects are being organized by a committee of nonprofits, community organizations and entities including American Red Cross Southern Arizona chapter America Serve Corporation for National and Community Service, Girl Scouts of Southern Arizona, Prescott College, Service for Peace, and Tucson Service Learn Group. And whereas citizens of Pima County have an opportunity to participate in events throughout our county on the King Day of Service, January 20th, 2014, as well as support ongoing volunteer needs and commitment 
to meaningful service throughout the year. Now therefore be it resolved that the Pima County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaims the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday as a day of service in Pima County and calls upon the people of Pima County to pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through participation in community service projects on Martin Luther King Day and throughout the year, passed and adopted the 7th day of January 2014. So thank you. Would uh, either of you like to say a few words? <clears throat> thank you so much for supporting this National Day of Service and um, supporting volunteerism and civic engagement and working to address poverty. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank those members from the audience that came to accept the proclamation and say it's a it's a, it's a great thing that we can use the Martin Luther King Day as a day of service for our community. We appreciate both of you being here today, but I also want to mention Supervisor Dan Ekstrom, who I recall before I was on the board, worked very hard to get that holiday passed in Pima County and the state of Arizona, along with a lot of other elected officials. Dan did an excellent job then, and I'm glad his legacy is part of Martin Luther King's legacy at this point. I also want to say that people that have been put in prison and have written uh, inspirational uh, programming as well as speeches uh, uh, go way back in our, in our world history, whether it's Socrates before he was put to death or St. Paul, who many of his uh, letters started. I write these letters from my chains in prison or Boethius or uh, many of the others that led up to the Martin Luther King history and documentaries. It's great to have you here today, and I just wanted to say that for the record. You're appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. All right, uh, I'm going to go through changes, and then we'll go through uh, to item 12. But the changes to the agenda today are on the regular agenda, page 3, item 13, County Administrator, Kanoa Ranch Conservation Committee, staff request, this item be continued to the Board of Supervisors meeting of January 14, 2014. On the consent calendar, page 8, item 14, contract and award procurement, award correction to uh, administering department. Uh, it, uh, it reads fleet services. It should read transportation. On the addendum agenda, page 1, item 2, board commission and or committees, Board of Adjustment District 1, staff requests this item be removed from the agenda. Without objection, those will be the changes to the agenda. And we move to item number 12 on the regular agenda. Supervisor Elias. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to go ahead and move the item, um, including resolution 2014-1. Second. Motion and second to approve item number 12 on the regular agenda, including resolution number 2014-1. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Supervisor Elias. I know we have someone here from the county attorney's office. Please come forward, too. All of us need to be together and stand around us here. Um, before I get started on this, I, I just have to comment, Supervisor Carroll, that was a very impressive literary background that, that you exposed right now in your comments about Martin Luther King Day. I, I was more than impressed. I'm going to ask uh, Ross to hold this, please. And um, this is a very important resolution because it's about the heart of our community. Uh, the emotional heart of our community and its remembrance of uh, the tragedy of January 8th, but it's also about the heart of our city right here uh, at the old courthouse of Pima County, where a portion of the first floor will be uh, set aside for the January 8th memorial, as well as a portion of Presidio Plaza. And uh, this is really the place where people come to share. It uh, certainly meets the spirit of Congress on your corner, which was the event that was taking place when the terrible tragedy took place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the resolution right now, and, and we certainly mourn 
uh, the people we lost. We certainly keep those who were injured in our minds and in our hearts. And I think we should also recognize everybody that was there at that shopping center that morning and the trauma that they were placed under having to witness and experience something like that. So all of us together this morning, if you can, please stand as I read this resolution. A resolution of the Pima County Board of Supervisors in support of a memorial in honor of those killed and injured at the January 8, 2011 Congress in your corner event. Whereas the tragedy of January 8, 2011 at a Congress on your corner event resulted in the deaths of six, Christina Taylor Green, Dorothy Morris, U.S. District Court Judge John Rowe, Phyllis Schneck, Darwin Stoddard, and Gabe Zimmerman, and injuries to 13 others, then Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, current Congressman Ron Barber, Bill Badger, Kenneth Dorishka, James Eric Fuller, Randy Gardner, Susan Heilman, George Morris, Mary Reed, Pam Simon, Mavanel Stoddard, Jim Tucker, and Kenneth Veter. And whereas the loss rocked our community and inflicted terrible suffering on the victims' loved ones, the shooting survivors, and innocent bystanders, and whereas in the aftermath of this horrible tragedy, Pima County residents organized impromptu vigils, memorials, and events to remember and celebrate the lives of the victims who were valuable contributors to our community's welfare. And whereas our democratic right to participate in our own governance and our ability to have our elected representatives be accessible to us and willing to listen to our concerns cannot be taken away from us by violence or intimidation. And whereas these bedrock principles of freedom of speech and right to assemble peaceably deserve to be recognized with a suitable memorial and that led concerned community members to create the January 8th Memorial Foundation. And whereas the January 8th Memorial Foundation seeks to commemorate those killed and wounded and to honor the spirit of Tucsonans who embraced unity, humanity, and hope, even in the face of the collective suffering and heartbreak. And whereas the heart of local government surrounds El Presidio Park downtown, which serves as a gateway where the public can access government services at the city, county, state, and federal levels, and whereas El Presidio Park already serves as a regional, civic, and cultural center and community gathering place. And whereas Pima County is the administrative and legal hub of the region and its historic and beautiful courthouse flanks El Presidio Park and the city of Tucson is the largest municipal jurisdiction in the region, the county seat, and operates and maintains El Presidio Park. Now therefore, be it resolved, that the Pima County Board of Supervisors supports the January 8th Memorial Foundation's efforts to create a space in El Presidio Park and a portion of the ground floor of the historic Pima County Courthouse for a memorial that will serve as a place for shared memories, will honor those lost and injured, and will keep alive the spirit that drew the community together after the tragedy of January 8th, 2011, with compassion, strength, and kindness, and directs county staff to work with the January 8th Memorial Foundation to realize this very worthy goal. Passed and adopted and approved by the Board of Supervisors of Pima County this seventh day of January 2014. Anybody like to say a few words after that? Please. I couldn't add anything more to this. Uh, my name is Steve Brigham. I'm the president of the January 8th Memorial Foundation. That's a beautiful resolution. Uh, the one thing that Supervisor Elias could not say is how well Pima County has demonstrated how government works. From the county attorney's office, to the county administrator's office, to the supervisors. This has been a wonderful effort, a wonderful year to find a place for an important memorial for our community. Thank you.
I want to reinforce what Steve said. But I want to add a, a little bit of a personal note. Since I worked for this county for seven years in the 80s and 90s uh, in the county attorney's office, and I, losing Gabriel has been horrific. I miss him every day. But the P Pima County, the folks who work at Pima County, the supervisors have been a big help, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the help they're giving us on this memorial. Thanks, guys. All right, we don't have any exec sessions today, so Board of Supervisors and other boards, Flood Control District Board, item number six. Mr. Chairman, um, I will move that item. It's a contract um, with uh, uh, Pima County and the City of Tucson to provide for maintenance of major water courses. Second. No cost. Motion and a second to approve item number six on the regular agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to Stadium District Board, item number seven and eight. Mr. Chairman, I'll move those items. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number seven and eight under Stadium District Board on the regular agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving to Board of Supervisors City and Regular Session Consent Calendar. Is there anyone here who would like to address the board on a consent calendar item only? Seeing none, um, what's the will of the board on the consent calendar? Supervisor Carroll. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to remove one of the items, and that would be item 13 on the consent calendar for a separate vote. If we could separate item 13, the award of a contract for a separate vote. Right, I'll second that motion before us is to separate item number 13 for a separate discussion and vote uh, from the consent calendar. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Supervisor Carroll. Mr. Chairman, it's been a long practice that I have um, held to not support these certificates of participation. We have had one emergency at the Fleet Services Building that uh, after weighing the consequences of not acting, uh, but at this point, I'd like to um, put for the record that I will not vote for the certificates of participation for the award of contract. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that item in that case. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number 13 of the consent calendar. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Uh, you vote three to one. Motion carries. Uh, we move back to the uh, remaining consent in its entirety. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the item, move the remaining uh, consent as amended. Second. Motion before us is the re uh, the approval of the remaining consent uh, as uh, in its entirety. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Uh, item 11 will be the last item on the agenda today. Item 13 has been continued. Uh, we move on to Public Works Administration, item number 14, the Chuck Catino Softball Complex. So where's it, Carol? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Catino has been profiled in the Green Valley News recently due to his steadfast ability to organize and to create the Kanoa Preserve Parks, including softball, trails, dog park, and other amenities. Mr. Catino was profiled also as a member of the Pima County Parks Commission. Mr. Catino has resigned from the Pima County Parks Commission and I have his letter of resignation in my hand. I accept a letter of, recognition, uh, of resignation, sadly, in order to make this great honor available to the community and to Mr. Catino and his family. Mr. Catino and his wife are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary this weekend. They have their entire family in town in Green Valley, and it's with great pride that I move the resolution number 2014-2 on the Pima County Kanoa Preserve Softball Park Complex being named 
the Chuck Catino Softball Complex. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number 14 and resolution number 2014-2. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to item number 15. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second to approve item number 15. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Moving on to hearings, franchise license permits, item 16 through 21. Mr. Chairman, if there no if there's no one in the audience that wishes to speak to us in opposition to these items, I move to close those public hearings and approve items 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Second. Second. Motion and a second to close the public hearing and approve items 16 through 21 on the regular agenda. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Eyes have it. Moving on to development services, item number 22, rezoning, CO9-13-03. Staff report. Mr. Chairman. Oh, Supervisor Carroll. Mr. Chairman, you must pardon me. I hope I can break in here and, and before you hear the staff report. Uh, this is a District 1 item, and since Supervisor Miller is not here today, nor her staff, I'm not sure that we have any indication uh, I'd like to obey the protocol of the districts and just uh, for the record want to say that uh, has there been any notice of support or uh, 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 any request anything. for a delay from Supervisor Miller's office on this item? Um, not to my knowledge, but... Uh, okay, then you can proceed. Thank you. Staff report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Tom Coyle, Development Services Department, before you today is a request for a rezoning action to go from GR1 or rural residential to CR3 with a cluster option for a 2.9 acre piece of property, which will result in 10 cluster units. Um, this request is on the west side of Twin Oak Lakes Drive and south of Hauser Street. Um, it has been reviewed by the Planning Commission and, uh, and is recommended for approval by a vote of seven nothing. Uh, it has also been reviewed um, by the Development Review Committee and they forward a recommendation of approval. Staff likewise recommends approval with the special conditions, the regular and special conditions of note. There is a uh, request to omit uh, condition 19. Um, there's a memo in your packet from Mr. Colton that explains the rationale for that omission. Staff is available for questions. Any questions for staff? Hearing none, uh, what's the will of the board? In terms of uh, condition 19, what is the recommendation? Recommendation is to remove condition 19 in light of the recent court cases. But I mean, is that, yeah, indeed. I mean, I understand that it, it's related to a court case. But my question is, and the approval with standard and special conditions as amended by regional <coughs> wastewater is that sufficient to remove does that su is that sufficient to remove item 19 or does the motion have to include removal of item 19 mr chairman commission supervisor bronson the uh, the motion has to include the elimination of 19 okay yeah. thank you um, then I'm go is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address us in opposition to this item at this time? In opposition. If not, I'm going to move that we close public hearing and approve with standard and special conditions as recommended by uh, the commission and staff um, and as amended by the Regional Wastewater uh, Reclamation Department and remove um, uh, condition 19. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Is the uh, my, Mr. Chairman is the applicant here, Alberto he's, Moore? Yeah, he's got. Okay, I just he's wondered. Back. I seconded the motion. Okay. I just wondered if there was anyone here um, for this rezoning. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, uh, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Roll call. Supervisor Bronson. Aye. Supervisor Carroll. Aye. Supervisor Elias. No. Chairman Valadez. No. 
By a two to two vote, motion fails. Moving on to item number 23 and resolution number 2014 uh, 3. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the item. Check. Motion and a second to approve uh, item number 23 and resolution number 2014 uh, 3. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify by saying nay. I have it. Moving to the uh, addendum agenda. Um, County Administrator, item number one, uh, speed photo enforcement. Mr. Alkaberry. Mr. Chairman, this item's on your agenda due to a counter proposal received from uh, American Traffic Solutions with regard to this uh, photo enforcement program. We have uh, previously had a contract with this firm for fixed sites, I think about 11 throughout the county. Uh, done a lot of analysis uh, back and forth with regard to speed management and whether or not they had any long-term effect on reducing speeds within Pima County. Uh, initially during their installation they tended to have that effect. Uh, I think the long-term studies completed by the Department of Transportation and their traffic uh, divisions indicate that that's uh, minimal at this point in time and that they tend to obviously have speed reductions near the cameras but not necessarily an overall systematic speed reduction that we were achieving. And for that purpose we indicated initially that we we're going to allow the contract to expire. The contract did expire uh, effective uh, January 6, just yesterday. And uh, the question then becomes in the counter proposal that was received uh, by the vendor on December the 18th, they talked about shutting off about seven of the cameras that were active, uh, putting in potentially crosswalk uh, cameras in certain selected school locations, having one mobile uh, facility for, we'll say, high pedestrian activity areas, uh, and uh, some modification to the fees that were being received. And so what we had looked at and I had the Department of Transportation review that proposal. I think it's their position that the proposal has some merit but it would require some further study and analysis as indicated in their memorandum. Uh, the sheriff in responding to the original proposal I think indicated that they did not feel it was effective and they did not have any particular comments with regard to the counter proposal. So I think this is a subject that we just simply decided that uh, it's something that uh, could go either way and it's up to really to the board to decide. Any comments from the board? Mr. Alkaberry, has there been any study uh, at this point about the possibility of using mobile units uh, along areas where there's high traffic of, uh, of, of children such as schools, charter schools, boys and girls clubs? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there has not been specific studies, but I think what, if you look at the response out of the Department of Transportation, they see that as one potential area of advantage to having speed enforcement. Okay. Uh, I, I obviously, I, the reason why I ask that is because obviously in terms of the static uh, units that we have today, what we're seeing is, is obviously traffic was slow right uh, incoming to those units um, and then speed up both before and after. Um, but truthfully, the one place where that kind of uh, behavior would be beneficial is, is in those school zones or, or in those areas where there's high traffic of children uh, crossing the street. So that's, that's why I asked that. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and I think one of the things that would have to happen is obviously the contract's expired. Uh, to actually modify that I think would require us to go back and ask procurement. Uh, yes, what can be done, I think probably nothing with the existing contract and that would then open up potentially a procurement process. But I think at this point in time, even the Department of Transportation, we don't have in consultation with the sheriff any specific information with regard to what school zones are problematic with regard to speeds uh, and including charter schools uh, because there's been a lot of charter schools that have opened recently in the last year or two that have become traffic issues and traffic problems with congestion at the site and that interface with pedestrians and children is becoming right. difficult. Okay. Other questions from the board? Um, I just as a follow up on that, I'm not sure there's a problem with speeding at those sites. It's a problem with congestion more than anything and illegal uh, parking, et cetera. Um, so in terms of how, uh, how radar enforcement works yeah. at, in, in that 
uh, scenario. I'm um, I'm just not sure. I don't know what uh, you know what how you would it works for speed, but does it work for anything else? And I don't know the answer. Yeah, Ms. Mr. Chairman, Supervisor Bronson, the only connection with speed is that typically what we see in these very congested environments where a parent can't get a parking space is that they'll let the children out of the side of the car. Right. And mm -hmm. if you've got a car coming the other direction speeding, it just makes it the mix very problematic. But it's not, it's indirect in, with regard to speeding. Mr. Chairman. So where's the kill? Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that um, many times I appreciate your comment about schools, whether charter or public schools or parochial schools. Uh, I have had concerns, but I do um, have experience where I could call the sheriff's department who has a wonderful motorcycle unit as well as trans traffic enforcement units that uh, have been responsive and have been out to these areas where there has been some concern and some traffic issues and have delivered citations and uh, it really does cure the situation rapidly because those are the same people day after day and uh, as Mr. Huckleberry said a lot of them are parents but sometimes uh, they are uh, frustrated drivers etc. So I just wanted to say my response from the Sheriff's Department has always been prompt and effective and I want to congratulate uh, those that are with the Sheriff's Department that helped with this a uh, comprehensive report. It was very illuminating, including Carl Woodridge. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Elias. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to make a couple comments before we hear from any speakers that we might have. I, I assume we have some that have signed up to speak. Um, but it strikes me that, that Supervisor Valadez's comments about school zones and how they've evolved is probably important to us, too. Uh, it used to be that when we built schools, we built them in neighborhoods on smaller streets. Uh, with the proliferation of charter schools that we have now in our community. Many of them, because of zoning issues, are placed on major arterials and, and, and bigger streets. And so that causes parking problems that Mr. Huckleberry was alluding to, as well as other kind of site problems. And, and frankly, speeding remains an issue. And so uh, it probably bears some more looking at mm -hmm. uh, as to what we do with schools and that kind of thing. But. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that we've had the kind of returns in reducing people's speed uh, substantially enough to keep any kind of program uh, going over any period of time. But I would also caution everybody and say that uh, I'd like to see some more work done on, on, on an, uh, a larger plan to, to look at speeding and uh, how that can be uh, affected by our transportation department as well as by the sheriff's office. So a number of different items in there, but, uh, but I would like to hear from the public as well. Okay. I have uh, two speaker cards. I'm going to ask each of you to please come up, identify yourself for the record, and uh, you'll have three minutes. Uh, Christopher Cole. Mr. Cole, please come up, identify yourself for the record, and you have three minutes. My name is Christopher Cole, and I reside at 4357 East Pima Street here in Tucson. And I am speaking on behalf of the Pima County Libertarian Party. Yesterday, I did a lot of work writing up a nice little prepared speech, printed it out, put it someplace where I would not forget to bring it this morning and probably <laughs> forgot it. <laughs> so I'll try and keep my remarks down to six hours. <laughs> the Pima County Libertarian Party is opposed to traffic enforcement cameras. Throughout the nation, courts are increasingly ruling against them and requiring the political jurisdictions that have them to refund all fines paid as a result of those cameras. Legislatures in several states, including Arizona, are working to outlaw them. Michigan has already done so. If the Pima County Board of Supervisors continues this contract or starts a new one, you're probably going to have that contract voided either by the legislature or the courts. And quite probably you're going to have to refund any fines that are collected as a result of this contract. Traffic enforcement cameras 
have a major problem. There's no human element. For example, if you have a red light camera, because of technical issues, the red light camera will have a much narrower definition of a legal right turn than the law does. There's no judgment involved, and so if you're a little bit too far from the curb, or you don't stop quite far, uh, close enough to the intersection line, you get a ticket. A human officer will realize that you made a legal turn and ignore it. That camera will give you a ticket. I'm not going to speak from personal experience here, but it's my understanding that you either have to pay the illegal fine or argue solely that the picture is not of you. All of your other defenses are eliminated. Your civil rights are limited. And even if you could fight that unlawful ticket, it is a great deal of expense. So either you pay the unlawful fine with penalties to your driving record and your insurance perhaps, or you spend a great deal of time and money fighting a ticket that should never have been issued. The Pima County Libertarian Party opposes traffic enforcement cameras. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Next, I'm going to call on Mark Spear. Please come up, identify yourself for the record, and you have three minutes. Yeah, my name is Mark Spear, and uh, I live in Pima County, and uh, I have been studying this issue of photo traffic enforcement for a long, long time, and I'm an engineer. I'm a retired Air Force pilot. I was a former safety officer for the United States Air Force. And uh, I'm an also an automotive enthusiast and automotive issues advocate. So it kind of brought me to this issue by <laughs> default on all the things that are involved. My opinion is, is that fundamentally these uh, commercial enforcement, or as I also <laughs> like to call it, artificial <laughs> enforcement, is fundamentally wrong because it puts a, an incentive in the entire process of enforcement away from safety and leads it to a monetary. It certainly is for the contractor. And in Pima County, when you go to your hearing, you uh, have against you the so-called prosecutor who is an employee of the contractor. And they are actually prosecuting you and acting as the witness. And it just feels wrong. In the last case I was there, I, I, uh, I noticed that, and I do have to compliment, though, that the last case I attended in Pima County had a spectacular, um, uh, whatever, I guess he's his, he would either be a magistrate or a justice of the peace or hearing officer there, and he was very, very good, so I was quite impressed. So at least there's something good that comes out of the system at, at times. The other issue is, is that the way Pima County and Tucson, which the, the contract of Pima County is based off of, is what they call a bounty system where the contractor gets paid per ticket. That's been ruled essentially unconstitutional and illegal in many states. It has fundamental problems to just having it that way. And there's other ways to do it, of course, but this is the most cost-effective way for an entity to just start doing the process. So my recommendation is, is that you uh, go with option A as uh, Mr. Huckleberry has suggested there initially um, before the contract uh, came in and let the contract expire if you want to research other issues, especially in school zones and those kind of things. Uh, go ahead and do that, but do it as an independent issue. It should be a competitive contract if you do anything in the future. But my recommendation is, is that you should take up a safety campaign rather than have it be this automated enforcement. There's very new technology in the your speed is kind of indicators. You can put out very new technology there that have, um, you know, low cost, uh, high efficiency, LED powered. You don't have to have that big trailer and generator and, 
and things of that nature, which the sheriff mentioned back in the original uh, presentation as, as being uh, damage prone once they put those out. But I think you can do a lot better that way. And uh, my other recommendation and final comment will be that I think you should have like airport drop off lots at schools. So you don't have the parents stopping on the wrong side of the road, dropping off the children, driving away, and then the children have to cross back in front of them. It'd be much better if they all just pulled into the school parking lot and had a drop off lot. I thank you for the opportunity and, uh, and look forward to your vote here. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Any mm -hmm. questions from the board? I just um, appreciate your comments, and I wish we uh, had the authority to do that with the school districts, but unfortunately, uh, we lack that. We, we have very little authority. They don't have to come for us for, to zoning or anything, and that's why we're seeing all the issues, as particularly as it relates to charter schools, uh, because we have such limited enforcement capability. But we can always give them hints. Yep, we Mr. try. Chairman. We try. <laughs> So is the list. Uh, I, I just want to thank you. I, I think your comments were well stated and, and well researched, and I appreciate that. Well, I don't know anybody who's done this more than I have over the last seven years. So that's great. All right, appreciate Mr. it, Mr. Chairman. You. Good morning, thank to you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Spear. Uh -huh. I wanted to say you were the first to spot a fad. Yes. And the fad appears to be ending. Yeah. It no, usually never, runs about a five-year course if you take all the data and all the research over many years. But we do want to assure you that there is a halo concept that the Transportation Department has produced, and it's part of the 55-page background material. And since I appreciate your expertise, I'm going to share with you the background info after the meeting if you'd like to look it over. I've always appreciated you being kind of on the the, the, the panel of uh, District 4. I'm sad to see that you've been redistricted out of my district, Mr. Spear. It's an honor to be uh, it was an honor to be your supervisor, but a bigger honor to be your friend. Thank you, Mr. Well, you know Spirit. I can throw a rock into your district. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of people have already done that. Yes, if, right. you, uh, if you uh, want to help me, we can, we can uh, work together. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Spear. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Is there any further discussion? If not, let me, uh, I'll try a motion on this one. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, I move that we discontinue the uh, existing contract and program and direct uh, the county administrator to, within the next 30 days, come back to this board with, uh, uh, with information uh, regarding a potential school safety enforcement uh, as discussed by this board on the day as today. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Elias. as we go into discussion, I would ask you to uh, consider a friendly amendment, and that's to take a look at a countywide Speeding plan. Cor correct. Right. That it's correct. not just about school zones, but it's about a countywide okay. speeding enforcement program. No, and maybe enforcement is the wrong word, but oh, helping us find way safety program. Right. That, that's right. correct, Supervisor. That, that accepted. Right, thank you. Very good. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All aye. opposed, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Uh, item number two has been removed. Uh, I'm going to go on a little bit of a strange order, but there's a, uh, there's a method to my madness. I'm going to do uh, call to the public first, and then we'll, the final item on the agenda will be item 11. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, call. Uh, uh, I've got two speaker cards, and I'm going to call each of you. Uh, please identify yourself for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Uh, Marianne Murphy. Ms. Murphy? Mary Murphy, new year, new name, identification. Uh, <laughs> Green Valley. I'm from Green Valley. And uh, can I take a moment of personal privilege? You know, when it comes to engineering solutions, I want the ladies and your staffs to know that shoulder pads from the 80s can be brought into date, up to date. So my favorite <laughs> blazer, why we wore them like that, I don't know. <clears throat> but the ladies were learning how to throw blocks. That's all I can think. So here I am, throwing my block. The stuff that's been going on, and, and y'all know about it. The first time I came here, I told you I had been arrested for my rescue of the fallen colors on my neighborhood property. Uh, that pretrial is tomorrow. Only fitting that it should be on January 8th is what has been tested has been a free speech issue. 
i've been escorted out of my homeowners associations by the sheriff's department i have been jerked around immeasurably by green valley council it's free speech i am being tested that flag still stands for freedom and it's only fitting that this is january eighth that this is going on tomorrow and i will attempt to defend myself i hope not to find out that i have a fool for a client but i think i've got this one under control some of the things that uh regarding my fairways properties everything that you've heard about with, uh, with flood control etc etc uh stuff's gone beyond the local level of homeowners association green valley council stuff is pushing into the federal level we're getting there my Vandalized property, I'm still seeking prosecution as a hate crime. That would be federal. Issues with possible mail tampering is federal. Green Valley ownership, FHA slash HUD, the very contracts that that town was built on are federal, and I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it. Green Valley, 1974, Haven Management took it over the core town. <clears throat> Green Valley Council was born that same year, 73, I should say. Uh, and this 14, now we're getting into the 50th anniversaries of the first homeowners, the original residents, including my aunt, Margarita, Green Valley's first. I'm in her home. And what's been done to my home has been done to my family in fact, done to my mother, because it was her home. Dad was never on the title. My mother. Long line of Irish going back here. And there was a favorite phrase going back to my relatives that came over to begin with. It was, come the revolution. The Irish state is free today. Grandpa ran money. Proud I am to be Irish. Revolution's just the past meeting the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Next, I'm going to call on John Becerra. What's that? No, go ahead. Please come up, identify yourself the record, and you have three minutes. Hi, my name is John Becerra, uh, Chapter Chairperson, SEIU, Local 48. Uh, I'd like to thank Chairman Valadez for the work we've done this past year or so, and uh, we look forward to working with Supervisor Bronson as the chairperson. And uh, <laughs> 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 it's and we'd like to congratulate you on the uh, assuming of the chair. Uh, <laughs> or shall we congratulate Chairman Valadez? Uh, but we look forward to continue working with you, uh, with the county, for the taxpayers and the employees of the county. Uh, we've enjoyed working with you in the past, and we're sure we're going to enjoy working with you in the future. And we hope you all a happy new year, and may we all fresh start. Uh, may it be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zetter. All right, now we move on to item 11, which is the reorganization. What's the will of the board? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, I'll uh, chance it and make a motion here. And um, I'll move that. I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move that the chairman should be uh, Sharon Bronson, or the chairperson should be Sharon Bronson. Uh, the vice chairman should be Richard Elias, and the acting chairman should be Ramon Valadez. Second. Motion before us is uh, making uh, uh, Supervisor Bronson chair, uh, Supervisor Elias uh, vice chair, and Supervisor Valadez acting chair. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those against, uh, please signify by saying nay. Ayes have it. Supervisor Elias. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd just like to thank you for the work that you've done over the last four years. You've been exemplary as a chair here, and you've handled difficult situations, and you've done a fine job. We're all very proud of your work. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I would um, ap absolutely echo uh, Supervisor Elias' comments. I think you have brought dignity to the position and civility, and for that, I, I appreciate your service. 
Thank Ms. you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. I want to also thank you for the fine job that you've done as chairman of this board over the last year. And I especially want to welcome Supervisor Bronson as the new chairperson and the slate of officers behind. I do want to say it's not my habit to vote uh, for a slate of Democrats, but I think there's very little choice when you're outnumbered at the degree that I am. But I uh, appreciate being here, and I also uh, thank uh, Chris Straub, who's done a fantastic job as our attorney many times on and off the record in our office or at the dais. He's been helpful. He's articulate, and he uh, certainly illuminates the legal issues that we face as supervisors in layman's terms that even I can understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the chair's uh, permission, I will now adjourn the meeting. This meeting stands adjourned.